Hello from ChemHelp ASAP. This video describes the discovery of PF07258669. This compound is an antagonist for MC4R, a target with potential use for treatment of appetite loss. The video reports the discovery program of PF07258669 as described in a drug annotation article in the Journal of Medicinal Chemistry by scientists at Pfizer in both Cambridge, Mass. and Groton, Connecticut. The citation is at the bottom of the screen and a link to the article can be found in the video description. This video does not describe every aspect of the article. I have selected the parts I consider to be the highlights that best summarize the project and fit within the medicinal chemistry class that I teach. If you happen to be a scientist who worked on this project and are at liberty to speak about this research or your general work at Pfizer, I would be very interested in interviewing you for a separate channel video. The channel email address is in the video description. Let's start with the target, MC4R. MC4R is a GPCR, is located in the brain, and stands for melanocortin-4 receptor. The endogenous ligand for MC4R is alpha-melanocyte-stimulating hormone, alpha-MSH, which is a peptide hormone. Activation of MC4R suppresses appetite for reduced food intake. Blocking of MC4R increases appetite and food intake. The goal of this drug program is to design an MC4R antagonist to stimulate weight gain. Stimulating weight gain is an unmet need for many patients, especially advanced cancer patients. MC4R is a known target and has received attention in the past. On the screen are two known MC4R antagonists. These compounds have demonstrated promising preclinical activity, but none has been advanced into the clinic to the knowledge of the authors. The screening campaign explored a focused 28,000 member library from the main screening collection at Pfizer. These were compounds that had shown promising past MC4R activity at Pfizer. The primary assay was designed to look for MC4R inverse agonism. So the discovery team wanted to be careful to avoid identifying and advancing weak partial agonists. The library screen yielded compound 5 with a modest potency. Interestingly, the researchers found that compound 5 undergoes an acyl migration to form compound 6, which has about 500-fold greater potency than 5 as an inverse agonist of MC4R. All the remaining compounds discussed in this program has, have this same core scaffold, a pyrrolidine with a 1 acyl group and 3 amino substitution. With its excellent potency, compound 6 was explored further. Here are some additional data on the compound. Again, 7.8 nanomolar is the compound's IC50 in the inverse agonism assay. The compound also has great potency in a competitive antagonist assay involving displacement of a radio-labeled agonist. The compound has a somewhat high efflux ratio with multi-drug resistance protein 1. A high MDR efflux ratio will likely limit drug exposure in the brain, the location of the target, MC4R. The compound has moderate intrinsic apparent clearance in human hepatocytes. More concerning was the time-dependent inhibition, TDI, of 3A cytochromes. I am personally less familiar with this metric, but this result is an indication of possible drug-drug interactions, which is a safety risk. Another safety risk, a severe cardiovascular risk, is compound 6's relatively strong potency for Herg channel inhibition. So, while the on-target potency is excellent, compound 6 has need of optimization. In order to address these issues, the research team initially focused on changing this quinoline ring on the right of the structure. The team made a number of new analogs with a 1, 2, 4 triazole in the upper right. Just two analogs from this stage are highlighted on this slide, compound 7 with a hydrogen and 8 
with the trifluoromethyl sacrifice some on-target potency relative to 6 in order to reduce the time-dependent cytochrome inhibition as well as reduce potency on the Herg channel. With these liabilities somewhat addressed, the team turned to other structural features in the lead series to improve other properties. We can see a few changes to the one acyl group, different substituents, and even a pyridine ring, as well as substitution at the alpha carbon. We can also see a pyrimidine ring as a new heterocycle on the far right. Across these compounds, on target potency and intrinsic clearance vary somewhat, but most notable is the change in MDR efflux ratio. In compound 14, we see the lowest MDR efflux re ratio, which as we have said is an indication of whether the compound can achieve adequate exposure in the brain and therefore at the MC4R receptor target. The research team also looked at different possible conformational effects within the lead series. So on top of this slide is compound 6, our early lead. Below is compound 17, which differs by just one methyl group. Despite the small structural difference, compound 6 is a thousand times more potent than 17. This change in potency from just a methyl group is often because of a conformational effect. This methyl is changing the conformation of compound 17 and causing 17 to bind less well. To explain the effect of this methyl, the team did quite a bit of research on conformations of two amino quinolins as well as two amino pyridines. Both compounds, 6 and 17, are shown in what's called the cis conformation. The ring nitrogen and NH are cis with respect to the hindered rotation of the exocyclic CN bond. If we do rotate about the CN bond, we will get the trans conformation. The cis and trans conformations are in equilibrium. For both compound 6 and 17, the trans conformation is favored. The methyl group in 17, however, introduces steric repulsion in the cis conformation. So the trans conformation is more strongly favored in 17 than 6. The researchers speculated that the cis conformation may be the bound active conformation. Compound 6 with its higher, albeit still minor, access to the cis conformation therefore shows much higher potency than 17. The team then started designing analogs locked into this cis conformation shape in order to further improve potency. Personally, I found this to be very nice work. Older lead optimization literature contains more conformational explorations like this, but new drug discovery programs are often very regularly guided by X-ray data of the target. The binding detail of the X-ray data often reduces some of the speculation and guesswork. Since MC4R is a membrane-bound receptor, a GPCR, X-ray data is much less available. There is, however, at least one X-ray structure of MC4R in the protein data bank, so the research team may have used that structure or a model of the target to guide some of the lead optimization process. Regardless, the authors do not explicitly mention using MC4R X-ray data. Using the conformational information, the team designed these conformationally restrained analogs. So in compound 20, here is the pyrrolidine ring. We still have the one acyl group. We still have the three amino group, but now we have an extra tether to the attached ring to lock the NH and pyridine nitrogen into something close to the cis conformation from the previous slide. All these compounds showed great on-target potency, intrinsic clearance was generally reduced, and MDR efflux ratio was reduced in compounds 22 and 23. 22 and 23 look very comparable, but compounds like 22 with this 
N-methyl triazole were found to often undergo demethylation to form circulating metabolites with undesirable Herg activity. Therefore, compound 23 was advanced for further research. Let's see some more information on 23. This table shows the selectivity of compound 23 for MC4R from among other human melanocortin receptor isoforms. Compound 23 has over 1,000-fold selectivity relative to the other isoforms. There is a MC2R in addition to the four isoforms on this table. Compound 23 also shows low affinity for MC2R as well based on other data included in the article. Here is some preclinical PK information. We haven't discussed properties like solubility or membrane permeability, but the PK in both the rat and dog did not raise any serious concerns. Compound 23 is rapidly absorbed with good bioavailability and reasonable distribution. These data were encouraging enough to merit preclinical efficacy studies in an animal disease model. On this slide, we have data from a 21-day study in a rat disease model for anorexia and cachexia. Cachexia is a muscle and fat wasting condition that is seen in some seriously ill patients, such as advanced cancer patients. Compound 23 was dosed twice a day orally. In addition to a vehicle group, dosages of 0.3, 1, 3, and 10 mg per kg were included. Keep in mind that compound 23 as an MC4R ligand increases appetite. The rats were monitored for food intake and weight gain. Relative to the vehicle group, compound 23 showed a promising dose response relationship for increasing both food intake and weight gain. Based on this demonstrated in vivo efficacy in a preclinical species, compound 23 was put through additional preclinical safety studies to enable initiation of clinical trials. The safety data were relatively clean. Compound 23 did not show any serious off-target risks in a standard safety panel. Activity against 11 different phosphodiesterases was weak. Compound 23 does show weak inhibition of the Herg channel, but the observed inhibition is very weak relative to the observed MC4R potency. Safety studies in the rat and dog revealed no serious safety or tolerability issues. As of the recording of this video, Compound 23, currently with a research designation of PF07-258669, is in Phase 1 trials. One trial, a single ascending dose study, has been completed. A multiple ascending dose study is ongoing. The clinicaltrials.gov identifiers for both studies are listed for reference. Thank you for watching to the end of this drug discovery story on PF07258669, an orally administered MC4R antagonist. A link to the original J MedChem article is in the video description. Please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, or making a comment.